So you've decided you're going to virtualize TrueNAS and you came to this video because you want to make sure you're doing it properly. And that is my goal here. The challenge with virtualizing TrueNAS is making sure that the drives are directly accessed by ZFS, the file system by which TrueNAS is meant to manage. Now, ZFS needs direct access to the drives to work properly, to perform well, and even better is when you pass the controller through. That is the most ideal way to do it. There may be some exceptions to that, such as MVME, where you don't necessarily have a controller and you want to pass the MVME drives directly through it, but the process is going to be the same. Now, I'm going to be covering this in XC PNG. It's relatively easy to do. I've got another video linked down below about how pass-through works, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it. I'll just show where it's done in this particular setup and walk through getting TrueNAS set up. So let's get started. Now, as I said, I'm doing this in XCPNG. This is version 8.3, latest available version in March of 2025. And we're going to go to the advanced page on this little mini PC. This is the same mini PC I did the Frank and NAS video with. You'll find that link down below if you're curious about the card I used. And there's a lot of cards in here, but specifically the one we're looking for is the AS Media card. The important part is whatever cards you have that you pass it through to the virtual machine behind it. In this case, it's this particular SATA controller. Do be careful though, when you're setting this up, there are other controllers on here. And if you were to pass through, for example, this device right here, that would create a problem because this is the device that XCPNG is actually booting off of. Or if you have other SATA controllers in here or USB controllers or any of these controllers that are doing something else, it is really important that they are not passed through. You only want to pass through the one controller to give it to TrueNAS in order to operate. Now, once you do this, it'll reboot. I've got another video, as I said, where I dive more in depth and you'll find that link down below on how XCPNG does pass through. But that's all you have to do in terms of settings for the virtualization inside of here. And of course, this will work in more than just XCPNG, but as long as you're passing through the controller. If you pass through just the drives, you may not get them to talk directly to TrueNAS in a way that works well. So passing through the controller is a great idea, unless you have MVMEs, because MVMEs can be passed directly through without being tied to a controller. Now, when creating new VM, we're gonna use the Debian Bookworm template here. TrueNAS is Debian based, so that should work fine. Decide how many CPUs you wanna to add to this, how much RAM you like to give it. And yes, you do wanna give it a decent amount of memory because ZFS is not memory hungry, but memory efficient. And what I mean by efficient is it will use the memory for caching. It's one of the big advantages ZFS has. So make sure you have enough memory in the system and pass that along in order to get that to work. Then we're going to choose our TrueNAS install disk, set up a network interface or multiple interfaces, depending on what how you want things set up. And you don't need a particularly large drive. I'm going to go ahead and give it an 80 gig drive here, but it's up to you just how much storage you need, at least the minimum, but probably a little bit more than the minimum is not a bad idea. This is just the boot drive because the boot drive will live here in the virtualization system. Now, as far as the rest of the process goes, it's just next and yes and a few answers to make sure you set the admin password for the web UI and it will reboot into TrueNAS. Now, once the VM's created and you know it boots, go ahead and shut it back down, head over to the advanced tab. We're gonna scroll down here and we want to add the PCI device. So we're gonna attach the device and there's that ASM1166 SATA controller, hit okay. And now we can start this up and go through the normal process of adding the drives. Now with TrueNAS back up and running, I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see the IP address of 172.16.16.24. You do need to look at it here in the interface because I want to comment. It will not show up here because we don't have the XCPNG or Zen driver tools loaded. And I don't recommend you load them. TrueNAS is an appliance. It's not made to have extra things loaded onto it. And if you were to try to go to the command line and load some of the dev packages, it will give you an error uh, about not being able to do that. So for example, here in Zen, it's not going to give you any of the memory usage because those guest tools are not installed. And as I said, I don't really recommend installing them. But if we go to the IP address, we log into our TrueNAS, we're going to go over here to our storage. We hit create pool. I'm going to give it the same name as before of Franken-NAS, hit next. We look at the layout. Let's go ahead and do a RAID Z1, but 
you know, whatever works for you. It sees the drives attached and we can put all six of those drives in there across one VDEV. Or if we wanted to split it and say, let's put three and have two VDEVs, it works the same. All those drives are passed through. They're not seen by the underlying OS, so they can all be used here. Fun fact. If for some reason this machine died and you wanted to attach those drives and import them into another ZFS pool, even one that wasn't virtualized, because the controller is talking to the drives and the ZFS data lives on those drives, you would be able to import this pool into a completely different system running ZFS or even another TrueNAS system. And that's all you need to do to set up TrueNAS inside of a virtualization system. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Head over to our forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com to have more in-depth discussion about this and other topics. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. And head over to lawrencesystems.com to connect with me on whatever socials you find me on there. All right, and thanks.